Kelsey needed to go out and get a difference maker for the Cardinals front court, and he did just that. On today's episode of the Locked On Global podcast, we are discussing the newest commitment to the Global men's basketball program. That said, stay tuned. You are Locked On Louisville, your daily podcast on the Louisville Cardinals. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome in to another episode of the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I'm your host, Dalton Pence. For those who don't know who I am, this is my third season hosting the Locked On Louisville Podcast. I serve, at a, ser- serve as a credential media member for uh, Cardinal Sports Zone, also uh, PA announced for various Louisville sports. I want to take this time to personally thank you all for making us your first listen of the day. Just a reminder, the Locked On Global podcast, free on all streaming services, five days a week, your team every day. The Cardinals front court got significantly better on Tuesday afternoon. South Florida star Kaysen Pryor announced that he was transferring to Louisville. Pat Kelsey gets the difference maker in the front court. We're going to discuss the significance of this move what his role will look like, and also answering what's next for Louisville with a couple spots remaining. So in the wise words of Ice Cube, today was a good day. Louisville fans were starving. I mean starving for portal news, for a new commitment. After all, um, the last commitment in which a player will be playing on next year's team was Chucky Hepburn. That was over a couple weeks ago. Yes, Louisville got a commitment from Kobe Rogers, and I'm not trying to take away the significance of that addition, but Rogers will not be playing next season due to um, rehabbing an injury. So as it relates to next year's team, fans have been getting antsy. More and more concerned and albeit um, maybe not confused, but discouraged. And I understand Pat Kelsey had done a great job up until that point, but recency bias is one hell of a thing. The what have you done for me now trend was in full effect. And with Louisville not having a big-time commitment in a couple weeks, fans were on the edge of their seats. It didn't help when great Osibor announced that he was going to Washington. And with some big-time front court pieces flying off the board, many were wondering if Pat Kelsey was going to be able to land a difference maker at the forward spot. But fear no more. Pat Kelsey is cooking once again. Jason Pryor is a Cardinal. Significant. The only people who will tell you that this is is not significant, those people will fall into two groups. Number one, they are either Kentucky, Arkansas, or St. John's fans. Or number two, they simply do not know ball. That's what it comes down to. Case and Pryor is a definite upgrade, mainly considering that there aren't many front court pieces right now for Louisville, but He is a ceiling raiser. He is a difference maker. Is he a All-American next year? Probably not. I mean, there's only so many of those players across the country. But does he raise the ceiling of this team and help this team get closer to 100% being back in the NCAA tournament? You're damn right he does. Case and Pryor from South Florida had a breakout season. Which was pretty wild because his first two years at Boise State, he only played in 13 combined games in two seasons. It never really um, it never really came easy to him. Wasn't able to find his role. He averaged less than three points a game each season. Misses the 2022-23 season. Transfers to South Florida. And starts 21 of the 32 games for a South Florida team that won 25 games last year, might I add. South Florida was not a bad team. Actually, they were one of the more fun teams that I had watched 
across the country. They played in an, in an American athletic conference that wasn't really all that bad. They had some pretty solid teams in it. But what he did last season was incredible, considering what he had done the previous two college seasons. He averaged 13 points a game, grabbed 7.9 rebounds per game, 1.8 assists per contest, 45% from the field, 35% from three, 82% from the free throw line, again, in the American Athletic Conference. Pretty respectable numbers. For Case and Pryor, the skill set is unicorn-esque. And I don't like to throw that term out there lightly. Being six foot 10, 210 pounds, the uh, Chicago, Illinois native has a rare blend of size, quickness, and a very advanced offensive arsenal. He can score anywhere inside of the half court. Most of his attempts will come from around the rim. I mean, he's six foot 10. He plays the four. He can bang down low. 40% of his field goals come from around the rim. He shoots 57% in the paint. So there's the efficiency there. But you see those numbers start to dip a little bit because he is a perimeter shooter too. Not just that, but he attacks the mid-range. There is a clear effort to get some offense in the mid-range. But outside of the paint, most of his offense will be on the three-point line combined. The majority of his attempts above the break on each side where he shot over 30% from both the right and the left. Now, this came from a compilation of, or a combination, I should say, of catch-and-shoot situations, spot-up, pick-and-pop. Also being able to create his own offense and create his own shot. The shot is very smooth. It's a high release point, so not much of an opportunity for players to block him. And his handles are really, really good for a player his size. So when I say he's a unicorn, what I mean by that is he's a 6'10 forward that can move like a guard, score down low, shoot the three, and also be effective in the mid-range. He is very, very efficient on the baseline, especially from the right side, at least in his season at South Florida. So advanced offensive skill set. The moves are there. I mean, his offensive bag is incredible. And I think that he is just scratching the surface of the type of player that he can be. So offensively speaking, he's going to be a welcomed addition to this system. But he can do more than just score. What are the common things that we talk about on this show when discussing players that Pat Kelsey's gone after? prior has been one of them. Kaysen is a very good passer. Now, understand that in the context of the position he plays, he's not going to be a point guard. He's not going to handle the ball the majority of the time. But he averaged 1.8 assists, had a 14% assist rate. So, showed the ability and willingness to make the passes. He's sort of a very innovative passer to where he does a good job of finding players cutting to the basket, driving into the lane and kicking out to open shooters, and being flashy in the process. So, overall, extremely solid in the box score, in the plus-minus category. Not to mention, he's more than just an offensive threat. Defensively, fantastic on-ball defender. Six foot ten with a long wingspan, solid lateral quickness to be able to stay in front of smaller offensive players, but also the length and more strength than you would believe to be able to contend with the larger players. With that length, he boasts a 3.2 block percentage, which might not look too great on the surface, considering he only averages 0.7 blocks per game. But it shows that he's an opportunistic secondary 
rim protector, which definitely can't hurt as the um, as the four, let's call it, on the team on defense. 1.2 steals per game, active hands, great understanding of the half court game to where he's able to jump passing lanes, um, not foul all that much. And he averaged about 2.2 fouls per game this season. 1.7 turnover, so he has to do a better job of not turning the ball over. But I think that um, he's going to be playing in a system that really benefits his skill set. I keep coming back to this term. Kaysen Pryor is a unicorn. Is he going to be the Naismith player of the year? Probably not. Is he going to be a bust? Probably not. I think he is a high-end ACC starter that raises the ceiling of your team. That's my take on the matter. Not only do I feel like he's a great player, I feel like he's a great fit for this team and Pat Kelsey's system. So what does Pryor's role look like next season? Well, his versatility gives Pat Kelsey some options as to how to deploy Pryor on the court. We'll discuss all of those options here momentarily after I tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. It's not just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to the perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Cardinal fans, I mentioned it once. I'll mention it to you again until you get it in your head. If you are one of those people that watches Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV and you have to turn down the volume with all that shouting, look no further. You can make the switch today to Locked On Sports Today. Full pun intended. It is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. Locked On Sports Today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news. Streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. This is one of the main debates that I've seen um, immediately on social media after the case and prior edition. And it is a great debate to have. Like, I love that we're having this debate because it is a testament to how great Pat Kelsey and company have done already thus far in the transfer portal. That is, what does Case and Pryor's role look like next season? I don't think, well, for me, I do think that there is a right answer, but it's like multiple choice. Select all that apply. Multiple things can be true at one time. For me, Pryor is a four on this team. I think that ideally, what you would go with if you're Louisville is, let's just float out there. Um, hell, I don't know. Let's say Chucky Hepburn, Corin Johnson, Terrence Edwards Jr., Case and Pryor, insert rim protecting center here. That would be my go-to. I've also seen things that say, no, start Javon Hadley. Okay, that's fine. Um, Chucky Hepburn, Terrence Edwards Jr., Case and Pryor, Javon Hadley. Insert big man center here that can protect the rim. I think he is a four in this offense, six foot 10, 210 pounds, plays a lot out on the perimeter. Look, there's no doubt in my mind that at times he could serve as the five. And he's a very solid opportunistic shot blocker. But 
I will want someone with a little bit more size to play the five and allow yourself to unlock Pryor's potential on both ends of the court. I think that Pryor operates best when he's able to slash to the paint and you need an interior threat to sort of pose that gravity that allows you to find the open shooters on the outside. People say, well, that's not really how this offense works. Well, first of all, how do you know how this offense works? And that's no disrespect to anyone, but truthfully, I, I feel like we really need to have a discussion on what exactly the offense is, because I think people only think about, well, they're going to shoot a lot of threes and they're going to play fast. They're all going to stand outside the three-point line. That is not what's going to happen. And if you watch Charleston at all, you understood that that is not what happened. They had a big man in the middle. A lot of people compare this to Nate Oates' offense at Alabama. Perfect. Let's use that example because Nate Oates utilizes size down low because not only do they play fast and shoot a lot of threes, but offensive rebounding is such a key, pivotal aspect of Alabama's offense and Pat Kelsey's offense. You, I know that Pryor is a solid rebounder, but you need a player that's going to operate a ton down low. And if you can get a player that – operates a lot in the paint, is the rim-running big man that you don't have to rely upon like a, a ton to be a huge offensive threat, but he can protect the rim like Ugana Onyensu would be a perfect fit alongside Case and Pryor or even Javon Hadley if you want to throw both of those guys into the front court. But for me, I think that Pryor isn't so much a five in this system as he is a four or maybe even a three. And that comes to the next position that he could play or the role that he could play would be the three. I think that you can slide a couple guys down. Um, Javon Hadley being one of them, Abubakar Traore being the other from Long Beach State. Both of them are under six foot seven, six foot eight, but they play larger than they are and they can play the four and allow Pryor to be more of a guard because he has those guard-like tendencies. Pryor, albeit he can bang down low and get his offense around the rim, Hell, he plays more like a guard than he does a big man. And I think that that's what we have to focus on here. That's why it is a point of emphasis to still go out and get a player that can play down low. So that's the role for me is that he's going to be a focal point on offense. For me, what's going to be fun is trying to guess on who's going to be the top scorer next season. I guess it really depends on who plays the most minutes, but it's going to be a system that rotates a lot. Like you're going to see a lot of substitutions. Terrence Edwards is going to be probably the fan favorite to be the top scorer. Personally, for me, I think Case and Pryor is going to be at the very least in the top two. I think he's top two. Very good case to make top one because he averaged 13 points a game. And that's another thing is people are like, well, aren't you a little nervous that he had such a large rise and he didn't play that well at Boise State? All I can tell you is that development looks differently for every player. Like there's no set timetable for development or pavenue or pavenue, path or avenue to get there. I'm more encouraged that he did what he did for a very good South Florida team in the American Athletic Conference. So long story short, no, I'm not really worried. I'm more so encouraged because it seems like a switch has flipped for him. And if that's the case, then he's going to be a very, very good player in the ACC. Pryor has had some big-time games this season, ones that lead you to believe that he could be your number one scoring option. He had 21-10 and 10 against Memphis on the road, multiple 20-point games. He had a stretch of four straight 20-point games. Um, in the NIT, had 17-8 and eight against Central Florida, 14-10 and 10 against VCU. The list goes on. Um, only had nine points, but had 10 rebounds against Florida State. So I can see him being the number one scoring option. I can see him being the number two. If you want to say he's number three, I, I won't disagree. I guess it really just depends on Chucky Hepburn and Corin Johnson in that point.
But I feel good about adding him to the mix because I think he's going to be a great player for this team. I think that that's what the role looks like for him. So with that in mind, I think that that directly affects what you're looking for next for the Cardinals. And Louisville currently has technically three scholarships left, maybe four if Kobe Rogers um, walks on and gets NIL to cover the scholarship and then is put on scholarship for the 25-26 season. But at this point, we're going to call it three scholarships. What does Louisville do with those three scholarships now that they had the difference maker in the front court? I'll tell you why here in just a second. Before we do that, um, I want to take this time to personally thank you all again for making Locked On Louisville your first listen of the day. Just want to remind you all that it is free on all streaming services, including YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, WHAS11.com, uh, multiple different avenues. Just recently got over 2,500 YouTube subscribers, had the biggest month in podcast history this past April. Very, very fortunate to have you all tuning in every day, um, and I appreciate everyone's comments constructive criticisms, et cetera. But we're not done yet. One more segment to go, and that is the best question. What's next? Well, if you remember when we discussed um, how Louisville should address the open scholarships remaining, what was number one? Do you all remember? Number one was the difference maker, and thankfully Pat Kelsey is looking at my list. What a guy. A true man of the people. He's fitting into the 502 culture already. Um, obviously facetious, but kind of funny regardless. But Difference Maker is now in the fold. And that takes a huge burden off of Pat Kelsey's shoulders. Because now, I'm not going to say like you're playing with house money, but you're just filling out the rotation at this point. You could go out and you could get a center. That was what number two was for me, is to get a complimentary piece to match the difference maker. I just explained it a couple minutes ago. The way you do that for me is you go out and you get a big man that can complement prior, that can bang down low, uh, impose that gravity in the front court around the paint, and also be a solid rim protector. At this point, there really haven't been many players that are talked about in that light that Louisville has been, um, you know, discussed with. Although I do think that if you were to go out and get a player like Noah Waterman from BYU that can shoot the ball well, um, not the greatest defender, but he is a fairly above average rebounder. I think that in that case, you can talk me into a case in prior Noah Waterman front court working because you have a ton of defensive versatility throughout the roster. And that's going to be a matchup nightmare to where one through five, everyone can shoot the ball. Everyone can move without the ball. And there is the attention to detail in terms of rebounding the basketball. So if Noah Waterman is the complimentary piece that you put alongside case in prior, I can deal with that. That's not that big of a deal because I do think that um, you have size, you have speed and quickness, and then you have just the overall offensive skill set to where you're, hey, it's like, hey, I'm trying to put up 90 points a game. Doesn't matter if we give up 85 if we score 90. And I don't think that this Louisville team is going to give up a ton of points considering the attention to adding very, very, very good individual defenders which Pat Kelsey has done thus far. So that would be what's next for me is going out and getting a solid complimentary piece. It seems like right now on Tuesday, I know that things change like the wind when it comes to portal recruiting, sort of like Case and Pryor. I woke up Tuesday morning thinking it was all Arkansas for the South Florida standout. Boy, was I wrong. Pat Kelsey said, let me cook. All right, man, here you go. Go ahead and step in the kitchen. Um. But that's where I would go next would be a complimentary big man piece. Even if Waterman is – like, here's what you could do. You go out and you get Waterman. Your front court's looking pretty good. You've got um, Case and Pryor, Noah Waterman, 
James Scott, who I think is going to be a very valuable rotational piece for this team. And then you have some guys that can play the four in Abubakar Traore, Javon Hadley. You have two spots left. I would like to go get – I've sort of changed a little bit. I would like to go get a backup guard because I – Imagine that Chucky Hepburn and Corin Johnson are going to spend a lot of time playing together on the court this season. I would like to go get a backup guard that can be a solid rotational piece, uh, whether that's Wesley Yates, although I don't think it'll be him, whether it's another player, who knows. But I would like to go get a backup guard. And then for that last spot, you can do a couple different things with this. You can get a rotational player down low, maybe a rim protector. Maybe like a Uganda Onyensu, and you just go all in, put your chips all into the center of the table. Or, look, I don't know that Louisville has the NIL budget to do so. Truly, Donovan said that Louisville's not done yet. I expect that probably means Noah Waterman is a very good possibility for the Cardinals. But one thing you could do. If you do have the NIL funds, and I'm not sure that they do, but if they do, hypothetically speaking, wait for a guy coming out of the NBA draft that withdraws and goes back to college and is in the portal, but you don't know it because that happens. Players enter the portal secretly at the 11th hour, but they don't announce it because they're testing the NBA draft waters. They don't like what they hear at the Combine. They decide to come back to college. Boom. Happened with Grant Nelson. Went to Alabama from, uh, what was it, South Dakota State. Definitely a possibility. And then you could say, well, I'm going to add the best player available. I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what position that looks like. I'm going to add the best player available with the NIL budget that I have. Just a possibility. There's a couple of different ways that Louisville can go about this. They have the luxury of doing so now because Pat Kelsey went out and got the difference maker in the front court. Like, no disrespect, but if you went out and you got like a rotational piece that is going to be like your backup power forward or backup center, then you're like, well, that, that's okay because he's going to play a role, but you now have to go out and it's more critical that you you go get that difference maker. A lot of different things you can do with the remaining three scholarships that could turn into four if Kobe Rogers red shirts. Well, he's going to red shirt, but if he walks on this next year, uses NIL to compensate for that scholarship and then some, and then he's back on scholarship for his last season of college in 2025, 2026. That's just a rumor. And that hasn't been confirmed. So I want you all to remember that that is just an unfound rumor. But it is a rumor that has been discussed by some key people. So we'll see what happens. But at this point, let's operate until we're told otherwise under the assumption that Louisville only has three scholarships remaining. So that's how I believe Louisville needs to move next. That's going to wrap up this Tuesday evening edition of the Locked on Louisville podcast. Everyone have a great day. We will see you right back here coming up very soon.